This problem is a little bit different. Why? Have to use, why do you have to use a channel? You're right. Yep, essentially you've got a function inside a function. So it's too complicated to solve on, it, on its own. We could expand that and derive it like that, but who wants to do that? Not me. So instead we use the chain rule. And you've got a function inside a function. Chain rule is really, really good because it's just using a skill that we already have. What skill am I using here? What's the... Starts with S. I am something. You see it in rugby league sometimes when you're a middle forward you get substitution. Okay, so I'm using substitution to simplify my problem. So y equals e to the 2x plus 6 to the power of 3. All I've said is, well, I'm going to let 2x plus 6 equal u. Does it have to equal u? It can equal whatever you want it to equal, doesn't bother. Then I'm saying, well, du dx times dy du will leave me with dy dx because the du's will cancel. So now all I need is du dx. So du dx is just saying, what's the derivative of u with respect to x? So derive that. Can I derive that? I get 2. Can I derive y equals e to the u3? e to the power of 3. What's the rule for exponentials? Up here, oh, somewhere, there we are. F dash x, oh sorry, e to the fx, the derivative is f dash x e to the fx. Can you derive u to the power of 3? Well, it's x to the power of 3. Can you derive x to the power of 3? What's that? 3x squared. Cool. So 3u squared e u to the 3. Happy with that? So now I've got these two things in the blue box. The u dx and the y du. And I can substitute those into my formula at the top where my du's will cancel and I'll be left with dy dx which is what I wanted the whole time. I simply then just sub my values in. Now I've kept my u's here. What I'm going to do with those u's later on? Do I want u's in my final answer? I need to substitute them back to their original value of 2x plus 6. I get to my final sum, I then sub my values in and it looks disgusting. But I guarantee you none of you could have derived that before you walked in today. Some of you probably are walking out thinking you can't derive that. Once you do this a few times, it will get a lot easier. Do you have to do all of that to get some marks? You don't have to do all of that, okay. Once, there is a shorter way to do this, but I'll, and you've probably been taught the short way. The reason I'm teaching you this way is because shortcuts are for those who know the way. If you don't know this process, when it gets more complicated, you've got nothing to fall back on. Whereas, if you've got this, you're following a logical process. You're substituting, you're using a known cancellation to get your value. There is a shortcut, and for routine problems, I'll encourage you to use a shortcut, but I really want you to use this to start with. Okay, until you've done probably 15 of these, you really need to be fluent with this. It also shows you what you're deriving with respect to. I know that my class last year really struggled with the idea of dy, du, and du, dx, and when they were deriving things that weren't y and x, they got really confused. There's two other rules we're going to look at. Probably not today because we're going to be short on time. They are product and quotient rule. Okay, You probably are going to need those to have a crack at your work tonight, but I want you to dabble before I teach it to you so you've got some familiarity. Let that wash over you. I don't expect you to walk out knowing it because I've sat up here, put some boxes on the board and talked about it. You're going to need to practice it and have a few cracks. Cool. All good, homework's on the board over there um, and that sheet that I gave you last lesson. I'll give you solutions to that on Monday as well or whenever I've got you next.